There's something I want to do before I get started on this story, but before I get there and before I be too disparaging and people might be unaware of how my content is, let me give you a disclaimer first. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are ready. I want to start this thing off. It's a beautiful little girl. But I want to start this particular video off. And if a picture could say, if a picture could talk, I want you guys to tell me, what do you think this picture and how this idiot is dressed, what he has on his face pertaining to tattoos? You guys know how I feel about tattoos on the neck and face. This man literally looks like he comes out of a comic book or a nightmare. This is somebody who clearly doesn't care about life, probably never has, has no future, has never valued themselves, and just looked like that he was assaulted with a tattoo gun. Like he just woke up and had all of this shit all over his face. He is going to be the main target of this story, but there are some other idiots that are involved in this as well. Now, I'm getting this story from WLWT.com, so thank you for the article. This angel right here is a beautiful little girl, and she deserved every opportunity to grow up and become something great. And her life was cut down for the dumbest reason possible. Silverton, Ohio, 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 yet again. Three men have now been arrested, and I want y'all to catch that. Three men have now been arrested and charged in connection with the shooting death of a nine-year-old girl in Silverton Monday night. The shooting happened on Plainfield Road just after 11.30 p.m. Monday, uh, excuse me, on Monday. Officials said it was a drive-by shooting where 30 rounds, at least 30 rounds of gunfire were fired into this house. Let me see if I can back that up so you guys can see it. I kind of showed you guys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, at least 13 bullet holes that you can see just from that picture alone. Just from that one picture alone. The sheriff's office said two girls and a woman were inside the, uh, uh, the home in, at the time of the shooting, including nine-year-old Demaya Barton Pickens, who was the angel that you guys just saw on my screen just a second ago. That is Demaya. I have some theories about this, but let me tell you the story first before I get to my theories. <coughs> Excuse me. The first person to be arrested was 25 years old, Kasim Dixon. The picture that that woman is holding up right there. The man with the tattoos literally over every place except his eyelids, Kasim Dixon. He is charged with the aggravated murder of Barton Pickens. He is also facing a charge of having weapons under disability. He is being held on a $2.5 million bond. Prosecutors said Dixon had been previously convicted on charges of including weapons under disability. How dumb can you be? So he has a disability and still thugging? Convicted of charges including weapons under a disability, possession of cocaine, I said possession, possession of cocaine, and fentanyl, and felony fleeing and eluding. In, uh, investigators said Dixon and 27-year-old Ryan Brown, let me see if I can get that those, those uh, other pictures up here so you can see them. These characters. 27-year-old Ryan Brown, who was arrested Thursday, drove to Silverton and opened fire at the home on Plainfield Road, killing the nine-year-old girl. McGuffey shared a potential motive Thursday, saying that the sheriff's office believed that the motive was retaliation. 
from some type of drug issue, possibly a robbery. So somebody was fucking a thug and the thug got this girl killed because somebody invited the thug in their house. And the thug activity almost caught up with him, but did catch up with the person that he was in a relationship with or somebody he was dealing with or living with. It's just a theory. McGuffey could not specify what the exact relationship was between the young girl and the relative targeted in the retaliation shooting. So I gave my theory. The relative was not at, um, in the home at the time of the shooting. McGuffey said Brown turned himself in Thursday and, and has been arrested and charged with aggravated murder. A third uh, suspect, Demario Williams. Let me get those idiots back up on the screen. Demario Williams, which is the one on the right hand side, has also been arrested and charged with carrying a concealed weapon. Traffic charges are also pending. The sheriff's office also said that Williams is allegedly trying to help the other two cover up the murder. The sheriff's offices said that Williams was with Dixon when they were located using drone technology. After a short pursuit and a crash, both of them were arrested. Another driver involved in the crash suffered minor injuries, but is expected to be okay. Weapons were also recovered from the vehicle involved. Hamilton County Sheriff Charmaine McGuffey called the incident a horrendous murder, saying it's absolutely not acceptable to act in this way. We're not going to stop until we apprehend you. It is beyond ridiculous that children are being shot and gunned down because people, these men, can't resolve their difference. McGuffey said the community is cooperating with the investigation. So I guess that's a positive thing. It's a beautiful little girl. And this happened absolutely for no reason. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If you guys would do us a huge favor, make sure you click that thumbs up whenever you're watching these stories that always share these videos. You guys have been doing a great job. Keep sharing it. And let's make this type of thing go viral. Just like Miss V over there. Make this go viral TV. Make this go viral crime podcast. Make these type of stories go viral, please. Help us with that. Here in the WLWT studio right now, we alert. Breaking right now, the man accused of killing a nine-year-old girl in Silverton was in court today. Authorities say 25-year-old Kasim Dixon is responsible for the drive-by shooting Monday night. WCPO 9 News reporter Valerie Lyons is live for us outside the Hamilton County Justice Center. Valerie, we learn a little bit more about why Dixon allegedly pulled the trigger. Yeah, Kristen, payback. That is what prosecutors say it all came down to. They say one of the little girl's relatives allegedly robbed Dixon's friend who thought that relative lived in the Silverton home. So the friend asked Dixon to go with him to shoot it up, spraying that home with at least 28 rounds. And we know one of those bullets hit and killed nine year old Demaya Barton Pickens. Now Dixon and his friend then allegedly drove away Monday night. Now in court today, the assistant prosecuting attorney asked for the highest bond possible for Dixon because of his criminal record. You see, he's been in and out of jail for multiple felony convictions, including drugs and illegal firearm possession. Now his bond conditions required he no longer have guns, but as the assistant prosecuting attorney detailed, he didn't follow those rules. This defendant's uh, history while out on bond is atrocious. Uh, the defendant was convicted of or charged with weapon under disability back in March of 2017 while out on probation on that weapon under disability offense. He picked up a new weapon under disability offense and ended up going to the Department of Corrections on both of those. Now, Dixon and a man named Demario Williams were taken into custody yesterday after the car they were in crashed at an intersection in North College Hill. And we got surveillance video showing that Williams, however, is not charged in the shooting. Dixon was given a two and a half million dollar bond by the judge today. And we do expect to learn more details of the shooting because the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office is holding a press conference at three. 
And now to that breaking update in the drive-by killing of that young girl in Silverton. Here she is, nine-year-old Demaya Barton Pickens was shot in the family's home, her grandmother's home. This was late on Monday night. She was rushed to the hospital where sadly she died from a gunshot wound. Now when police got there, the street was littered with shell casings and the house was shot up with bullet after bullet hole, leading them to then believe that this was a drive-by shooting. Well, today the Hamilton County Sheriff formally named the suspects charging two of them with murder. Investigators believe Kasim Dixon and Ryan Brown pulled the trigger and today both were charged with murder. Those two and Demario Williams are in custody. The sheriff says Williams tried to help the murder suspects flee from police and hide evidence. Well, this afternoon, the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office fit all the pieces together for us. And so uh, Sheriff Charmaine McGuffey held a news conference just a short time ago, naming these men as the suspects. WLWT News Science Karen Johnson listened in. Karen, a lot coming out today. Get us up to date on what you learned. Yeah, I did, Cherie. Investigators are now saying this was a retaliation shooting. Three men have been arrested, two of whom are charged with murdering nine-year-old Demaya Barton's Perkins. 25-year-old Kasim Dixon was the first to be arrested on an aggravated murder charge. He is now being held on a two and a half million dollar bond. Investigators say he and 27-year-old Ryan Brown, who was also arrested, he was arrested this afternoon, drove to Silverton and opened fire on a home on Plainfield Road. Close to 30 rounds were fired. The sheriff says two young girls and a woman were inside at the time nine year old Amaya was shot and killed. Prosecutors said the suspects thought a man named Marcus Barton was inside and the shooting was in retaliation over a drug dispute. When you perpetrate events like this, when you shoot randomly, when you bring guns and you like to light up the area, we are going to bring every resource available to the table. We are not going to sleep. We're not going to stop until we apprehend you. A third suspect, Demario Williams, faces weapons and traffic charges. The sheriff says he tried to help the other two cover up the murder. Investigators say they did recover an AK-47 and two handguns. Sheree. So the person, Karen, talked to us a little bit about the person the suspects were targeting was not even in the house at the time of those shootings, correct? No, no not according to the sheriff. And we did confirm, though, the man they were targeting is related to Demaya, but at this point, we just don't know the relation. Karen Johnson reporting live for us. I know this is a case that has stunned so many people and will, of course, stay on top of it for you. You can get the latest updates on air online and on our website, WLWT.com. Oh, goodness. So, again, hashtag, that's an AFC hashtag, by the way. See this big old AFC? It's an AFC hashtag. Hashtag date thugs, date death. When you date thugs, you date death. And I believe that whomever the person was that this drug deal went bad through or because of or ran, ran off on the plug, ran off on the plug, right? And apparently somebody had to pay for that. They couldn't find him, so they shot up where they thought he was at, where he was living at or whomever he was around, whoever he was close to. I tend to think it was probably a girlfriend because it seems like a lot of women like these fast life, dangerous criminal type dudes. They have no problem getting women. So I'm just assuming maybe he was living with a family member. I don't know until that actually completely comes out. But I'm pretty sure he's trying to lay low because he understands that he's the cause of this baby dying. He's the cause of that house getting shot up. He's the cause of this drug deal going bad or whatever the case is. So now you have three black men that are going away for life, threw their life away over whatever you want to say. You got another black man who's out in the streets who's going to eventually end up throwing his life away because it's probably not going to change. It's never going to bring this baby back. And this baby lost her life behind a bunch of grown people's stupidity because they don't want to go out and work. They don't want to earn an honest living. And they think that they want to break the law and get things the illegal way. But to that baby... Which is where my main concern is. This is a beautiful, bright spirit, beautiful smile. And this baby girl could have grown up to become anything. And her life was robbed behind what? And for what? This girl was nine years old. 
was at home and didn't do anything to anybody. It's just hard to talk about these stories. But Young Princess, R.I.P. I would love to have I would love to just stop saying RIP. I would love to stop presenting these stories, but they're not even slowing down. We gotta slow down our actions, use these stories as cautionary tales. We gotta make changes in our own lives and we gotta do better by way of our kids. Let me know what you guys think about this story. Okay? Thank you.